Welcome back to our podcast interview with Julie Court, the author of the Incredible Life Makeover book. And we are here to follow up with our three interlocking keys to forgiveness. This is part two. In part one, we discussed the first two keys. And in this podcast, we're going to discuss the third key. And at the very end, you'll want to stay tuned for our grand unveiling of our idea to help bring you an incredible life makeover transformation. Hi, Julie. Well, hi, Anne, and thank you for having me again. And it's so, um, I'm so excited to be here. And I'm looking forward to talking about the third interlocking step of forgiveness, because it is one of the most elevating and um, probably the least practiced of the three steps. Good stuff. Well, let's jump right in. What's step three? Okay, so this is one of my favorite parts, um, is that I believe that when I really grow is when I choose to obey the teachings of Jesus. And right after the Lord's Prayer, he talks about forgiving our enemies. And there's another part in the New Testament that talks about forgiving those who despitefully, on purpose, use us. <laughs> and so here's my, here's my little graphic for that. So now that I get underneath the right atmosphere over here, I have a clean heart, but I can actually elevate when I do Ephesians chapter 2, which is I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. And when I'm seated with Christ and I visualize myself, I imagine myself seated next to Christ, like the word says, and then I become the source that the, that the kingdom of darkness begins to worry about because then I can release the joy and love and blessings of the kingdom of heaven over the life of that person and into the life of that person. And so I choose, uh, step three is choosing to bless your enemy and those who have hurt you. And what happens is, instead of staying down here, you actually become like positioned as a daughter of the king or an ambassador of the kingdom to be able to release life into the earth and fulfill the great commission, which is to go into all the world and to make disciples and to teach them everything that Christ taught. And he did teach to bless our enemy. Oh, Julie, I love that. But what comes to my mind is I don't want to bless them. I want to make them suffer. That's right. But then the thing is you really know that you need to go through this process mm -hmm. because when you choose as an act of your will to bless them, one of the examples in my book in chapter two um, was a divorced woman whose husband left her because he wanted a submissive wife and he wanted someone that he could do whatever he wanted. And so he ended up divorcing her and uh, marrying someone of a, um, another culture that was much more submissive. And um, for a year, she prayed a similar um, pattern as I have in my book, and she added every day, I love, and then put in his name and her name every day. And when her daughter got married, she had to go back to the country he was living in and go through that wedding, you know, experience with her ex-husband and his new wife. And when she went up to them, she was able to greet them and say, and I love you she realized she meant it. And so she was whole and complete and the enemy was not able and her own will, what she was partnering with was not able to hold her back for the rest of her life. And that is victory. That's victory in capital letters. <laughs> it really is. So my husband and I were sharing um, with our email audience. Uh, I have a forgiveness thermometer. It, and, and here's how it works. If I can be in the same room with that person who's offended me, who's made me mad, who's abused me, who I have judged, 
for whatever reason, if I can be in the room with them and not twitch, I, oh. I know that my forgiveness has stuck. Terry, my husband, Terry calls it um, a twitch mom, a twitch, twitchometer. <laughs> I like that. He calls it my twitchometer. And that mm -hmm. tells me, okay, my forgiveness stuck. You know, I can, I can walk in a greater level of love and freedom because I'm not twitching. I kind of have a forgiveness thermometer too. And uh, what I think, um, I like yours though, um, but I also think that another way to tell if we've really forgiven is if we, when we're talking about that person, don't have to put them down, criticize them, or justify to other people and repeat what they did to us. Naturally. Like, right. not, I guess in the beginning you'd have to force it maybe. <laughs> well, just, but you, if you're, if you don't have to bring it up and you don't have to justify and you're not saying bad things about that person, mm -hmm. it is pretty clean. Yeah. Um, you're thinking it all and not saying it. But um, my thing is, is I like that because that's really where the rubber meets the road, you know, what we say. And that's really how we affect the other people's atmosphere. So that's kind of one of the, one of the ways that I gauge uh, how I'm doing on my forgiveness with a particular person. I love it. That's great. I, I love the phrase where the rubber meets the road um, because that's, we, we miss that so much. Um, and so much of what we, we share with our people is, we think we're on a different road or we think, you know, we're thinking it's in a different place. It, I've had a really rough week and um, where my rubber has hit the road is as I've struggled with some discouragement and um, frustration, especially with my technology, as I was sharing with you earlier, it's like, I've done this a hundred times. Why won't it work? And as, as we were um, talking about that and my husband was just praying over me and, and I looked at him and I said, oh no, this is my strengthening myself in the Lord. I said, y'all better watch out when I come out of this because I'm going to be like superwoman. I'm like in CrossFit training with strengthening myself here. That's where I feel like the rubber meets the road. And I feel like we miss that so many times. You know, we, we miss instead of not going to the wedding or going to the wedding and staying on the other side of the room for her to be able to go to the wedding and truly love and express that love to her ex and his new wife without twitching. Yes. Know, sincerely. Like that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. Like you said, that's strengthening yourself in the Lord. That's transformation into the image of Christ because she's done the work. She doesn't have to stay on the other side of the room. Right. And that's why um, one of the subtitle of my book is step-by-step -step transformation to wholeness because it is a process and that didn't happen for her in one day. You know, it happened over the time that she prayed and she kept submitting and obeying scripture and working with the Holy Spirit and surrendering that. Mm. And, um, and he brought her to a new place. And so that's pretty powerful. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited. Your book is on the way to me. And let's talk about that. So the title of your book is The Incredible Life Makeover. So tell us a little bit more about your book. Well, it offers seven phases of transformation, like I said, and it offers six superior mindsets for someone to uh, get to the place where they have picked their kingdom. They know the rules and principles and are living them and that they can defend their kingdom against the attacks and of the enemy, the discouragements of life, and just the accidents and things that we go through is just part of living on the earth. Um, and so, and then the six superior mindsets are just mindsets that are rooted in um, scripture, but they're practical um, things about what happens if you've um, experience one of the top 10 stressors like divorce or foreclosure and how do we manage tragic losses as a you know as a Christian or a person of faith um, it has 
things in there about communication and, and um, improving all of our relationships. And it has things to dealing with stress. And, you know, so it's just, um, it's really an equipping tool to help people to be able to walk in freedom and success. And um, I believe as Christians that Christ caused, uh, calls us to live an abundant life. And it's not that we have to do this on our own as some great work, but we get to partner with him as he's author. He's the author and finisher. But he did say he came to give us an abundant life. And so if we implement, which is really what the book is, it's a tool to implement, to do it, uh, key kingdom concepts that are actually become key way of living life skills. And that's what I hope to share with your readers or uh, wherever I go. So you actually have um, a conference that you lead based on your book. Um, yeah, I have uh, something called the Incredible Life Makeover um, Women's Event. I do those not only um, in my region, um, mostly on a yearly basis, but I also am willing to come to new regions and um, host, co-host an Incredible Life Makeover to spread it to new regions and new uh, groups of women who want to become the anointed, powerful women that God is calling them to be. Um, and to get over these terrible hurts and wounds that the enemy has brought into their life to steal, kill, and destroy. And we don't have to live there anymore. And it all starts by the three steps of forgiveness and then moving on from there. I love it. I love it. So what we've talked about today, the interlocking keys, is actually from a chapter in your book. Correct. That's, it, it's um, outlined in chapter two. Um, and the, a clean heart, and it's based on what I call the supernatural power of forgiveness. And they can go to uh, my website, newlifetoday.com, and they could um, sign up for my email list. But more importantly, on the website, you can listen to radio interviews about this subject as well. And you can go to the store and get a book and, and or a companion discussion guide. And I would just love to um, be able to impart some of these truths um, to be a benefit to your audience. I love it. I think we should do a conference together. I would just so love that. And so I'm going to be putting that on my prayer, on my prayer journal. And um, I just think that we have such a heart, uh, the same flow that um, I think that it would just be a beautiful, beautiful um, time together. Awesome. We'll have to, um, like you say, pray into that and see what the Lord's heart, see if his heart is in line with our hearts. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I have a dream. I'm a, I'm a Bible teacher, but my dream is to actually break down denominational walls in cities and regions and um, to bring healing where there has been offense and separation. And so sometimes that happens. The Lord sends the incredible life makeover to churches who have experienced disappointment with their leader um, in some way, um, which is very sad. But the Lord can heal and the Lord can bring uh, reconciliation and he brings new life every day. And so I would love to, um, I, I just, that's my, it makes my heart sing to partner with, with women who, ha who God is doing, um, these sorts of new life and revival and unity all across the United States. Mm -hmm. And so I would just love, love to come to your region. You know, we're in the South. Uh, I, I come, <laughs> come during the winter when the weather's nice. Sure, sure, we can make that happen. <laughs> That's great. So tell me once again your website. Uh, it's newlifefortoday.com. And are you on Facebook? Um, I am. I have a personal page, Julie C. Court, or I have a New Life for Today uh, Facebook page for my ministry as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we'll make sure we connect you there and we'll put all that information in the show notes so people know where to find you and uh, grab that incredible life makeover book. Well, thank you so much, Anne. It has been a privilege and an honor to be on your podcast today. And I just... Um, 
pray that um, for your audience and know that you are sowing good seed into their hearts and into their minds. And thank you for that. Awesome. Well, you have a blessed day. We'll talk to you soon, Julie. Okay. Bye now. Bye.